Hey guys, it's Pastor Sam. We're here in my kitchen today because we're cooking up another fun science experiment. So let's get started. Today, we're going to be growing crystals in our kitchen. Did you guys know that you could do that? I had no idea, but I'm so excited to show you how to do it and I hope you have a lot of fun if you try it out. So to grow crystals, the most important ingredient that you need is borax. I'd never heard of this before, but it's a detergent booster that people use to help uh, make their laundry cleaner. And you can find this at Walmart or any big box kind of store, and you need kind of a lot of it, so I would get a lot. It's not expensive at all. And make sure when you use this that you always have an adult around because it can irritate your hands, and it's not something that you want to eat or that you want to smell, so just be really careful with it. The next thing you need is some string or twine, some wooden dowels, or you could use a pencil instead. You need some pipe cleaners, or if you want to have a lot of fun, you could have giant pipe cleaners, which I thought these were really great and it's mostly what I use. You also need a bowl, a bowl of any size, depending on how big your crystals are going to be. And then you need some jars. So these are the ingredients that you need in order to grow some crystals along with some hot water. So make sure you definitely do this experiment with an adult if you decide to try it at home. So in order to grow our crystals, we're going to need something for our crystals to grow on. So grab your pipe cleaners and start making any shapes that you can imagine. Just have a lot of fun with it. Let's try it out. So in order to get started, we're going to put some borax powder in all of our containers. All right, now that we have some hot water and borax in each container, the next thing we're going to want to do is take some string, Cut off a piece about this long and then go ahead and tie each of the shapes to a wooden dowel or a pencil and what we're going to do is we're going to suspend the shape in the hot water upside down from a string so that later once the crystals grow on it we can go ahead and pull it out. All right, now that our pipe cleaners and our items are all soaked in the borax and water mixture, all we need to do is wait. So be really, really quiet so that those crystals can grow. So while we wait for our crystals to grow, let's talk about the science behind why crystals can grow on pipe cleaners. Everything in our bodies, everything in our world is made out of mo molecules. And they are so small, our eyes can't see them. We have to look through really, really strong glass called a microscope in order for us to see them. And let's pretend that these are molecules that make up water. Now, when water is in its liquid state, like when we drink it, the molecules are maybe this far apart. When they're in their solid state, which is ice, they're really, really close together, and that's why it becomes really hard and we're able to pick it up. But when water is hot, like how we heated up the water for the borax solution, the molecules get further apart from each other, and all of a sudden, there's a lot more space than there used to be. If we add in the borax, and we'll say that these cotton balls are borax, if we add in the borax, you'll notice that there's space for the borax to fit between the molecules. But what happens when the water gets cooler? When the water gets cooler, the water molecules come closer together, and all of a sudden, there's not enough space for the water molecules and the borax molecules to be together. So those borax molecules have to go somewhere. And guess where they go? They grab onto the pipe cleaner. And when one borax molecule grabs onto the pipe cleaner, another borax molecule can come and grab hands with that borax molecule, and all of a sudden, all over the pipe cleaner, as the water gets cooler, crystals form on the pipe cleaner. 
The reason why the crystals form is because the water in the borax solution is a super saturated solution, which means there's more borax and water molecules in that solution than can actually fit. So those, those borax molecules have to latch on to something else, and that's how crystals form. So let's see if it actually works, and we'll check on our crystals now that they've been sitting there for several hours. All right, so our crystals should have formed by now, so let's check out what has happened, starting with our green feather. Whoa! Can you see that crystals have formed in each little strand of that feather? That looks amazing. Let's check out our blue spiral. Wow, that almost looks like rock candy. Here it formed a really, really big crystal in the bottom, but here you can see that there are really pretty crystals all throughout the spiral. And remember to wear gloves during this part if you're going to touch the crystals so the borax doesn't irritate your hands. Now this one should be a pretty big yellow diamond. Wow, that's pretty heavy and it's really hard. And if you touch it, the crystals actually stay there. They don't fall off. That's amazing. I hope you can see the light coming through that. And then the last one should be our pink heart. There it is. Whoa, those are some big crystals on that pink heart too. Hope you guys can take a look at that. These would be so fun to hang in the window for a light catcher, but those borax molecules really hung on to that pipe cleaner. That looks really, really good. We really grew crystals in our kitchen. I hope you guys try this out too. The reason I think this experiment is so cool is because it reminds me a lot of what God wants to do in our lives. Have you ever heard of the phrase, I'm in hot water? Usually that means someone feels like someone is in trouble or something hard is happening in their lives. Have you ever had something hard happen in your life? Usually when someone is in hot water, all they want to do is get out. But one thing that's really cool is when I think about being in hot water, like we learned in our science experiment, it means that now there's all this room for something else to fit in there. And a lot of times, even though we just want the hot water or the thing that's hard to be over, what God likes to do is He likes to take something else when there's space in our lives and add it in there. When there's space in our lives because we're in hot water, God can add in His peace. When there's space in our lives because there's hot water, God can teach us an important lesson. And when that hot water is gone, when life gets cooler and when things are easier, we can discover if we let God into the hot water of our lives, that our lives and our hearts have become even more beautiful than they were before. Romans 8.28 tells us, And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. That tells us that God doesn't cause the hot water times in our lives, and it doesn't mean that He wants us to have the hard times in our lives, but He promises that if we remember that when we're going through hard times, it makes room in our lives for Him, He promises that He can make all things work together for good, which means He can bring good things even out of the really hard stuff, just like He brings crystals out of super saturated borax solutions so that after we're done with the hard times in our lives, our lives and our hearts are even more beautiful because we trust in God. Thank you guys for joining me in my kitchen to grow some crystals. And remember, if you're going through some hot water, make sure to ask God how he can produce something beautiful in your life through it.